Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Nutrition, uh, Human Nutrition 2. We've got assessment to be a little bit about the presentation. So the presentation can be filmed using Zoom. It can be filmed using PowerPoint, but you will need a camera because you'll need to actually imagine that you're presenting to a group of people so you can use it. Um, you can do it in, as I said, in Zoom. You can set up a free account. Uh, you can also do it in PowerPoint. You can do it in Prezi. You will need to create a slide deck. So this is a slide deck. This is what I'm actually doing now. I've got a slide deck and I've done this in PowerPoint, the slide deck, or you could do it in um, Prezi. You can also do one. You could do it in um, something like uh, Canva, something like that. You, it, it doesn't really matter. So it's just a visual presentation. Now, in terms of what you need to do is, is make sure you've looked at the assessment brief and that's going to really help you have a greater understanding of what you need to go through. So you need to prepare a slide deck. And these are a series of slides. You will need to use a camera. So um, I've got a camera on my computer. You'll need, uh, you don't need to set up a camera, but a camera that's built into your computer. If you don't have a camera, uh, maybe you can ask someone else, you know, maybe another student has a camera. If you're on campus, um, you know, there are some computers on campus. You can come and actually use that to film as well. You'll need to reference your slides, so any images that you use, any text that you use, you need to reference, just like what you did in your last assignment. You need to write a script. So we recommend you do this because you've only got six minutes um, six minutes, 60 is your total maximum time you can film. And uh, you need to be really succinct with your words. So you can lay out your slides. Then I would actually write yourself a bit of a script. You don't have to, but it just makes it a little bit easier. Also, when you've written out your script, just try not to um, sort of looking at your notes the whole time with your head down. That's not a very interesting presentation. So, you know, I understand if you, you know, you've got to look at your notes, maybe use some bullet points on your slides and then have a bit of a look at notes to jog your memory, et cetera. So there's a little bit of work needs to go on this in terms of practising how you're presenting, et cetera. Um, you'll also then you need to record the presentation. It might take you a couple of goes because you might think, oh, I've watched that again and I wasn't really happy because I didn't feel like I actually got through the information. So what do we know assessment? How many slides do you need? Well, that's really up to you. Just probably we don't make it, we talk, we talk about death by PowerPoint where you're just click, constantly clicking, you know, 10 seconds on each slide. So you're literally just going through really quickly and be careful not to put too much text into slides as well. Uh, it's due on Sunday of week 10. So the week starts on a Monday. So it's the Sunday of the week 10. So it's due at 11.55 p.m. with 30% of your marks. So let's have a look at the assessment rate. So as I said, 30% of your marks marked out of 100. It is a video presentation. So we recommend that you have a cover slide, talk about you know, what's your, who you're presenting to, make sure you say your name. Hello, welcome, my name is Liz, and today we're going to be speaking about uh, nutrition for teenage um, athletes and, you know, some of the things they need to be aware of and just going through some of those key points. So make sure you tell us who it is you're presenting to, tell us what your name is and, you know, what you're going to speak about. Okay, so that's kind of your cover slide. You're going to have it usually, I usually have an outline slide about what we're going to cover in this session. Um, and then really the body of this presentation is going to be the macronutrient requirements to support physical activity. So what are your macronutrients? Carbohydrate, protein, and fat. All right, so three macronutrients. You're going to talk about those you don't need to go them in, in great detail, but you do need to talk about that. And that was covered when we did fitness. So when we went through the fitness session back at about week four, I think it was, go back and we went through carbohydrates, proteins, fat, why they're important for physical activity. 
You're also going to talk a little bit about food biotechnology. You're going to look at the pros and cons, and that's coming up in future weeks. We'll be looking at that. Uh, we'll also be looking at genetic modification and sort of what's the for and against. So I'm sure you can find lots of information that goes against this, but we also want to look at what's some of the positive, maybe looking at it from a public health perspective. If you're in a developing country, third world country, would it be beneficial to be able to have something that has got high vitamin A or something else, maybe iron? So there may be some good cases for genetic modification. Then you have to choose one non-communicable disease. So the non-communicable diseases means you can't actually catch it. And that was covered in diet and disease. So things such as diabetes and cancer and heart disease, osteoporosis, hypertension. You can cover off any of those and you're going to choose just one of them and you're going to talk about how you can modify or prevent this with appropriate dietary practices. Then you're going to select one of the micronutrients you wrote about in your first part of the assignment in the report. So just choose one. So if you chose, if you wrote about iron and zinc, you just choose one of those. And you're going to explain whether this nutrient is required in supplement form. Do you need to have it in supplement form or can you get enough from your diet? So can you meet the, uh, the NRVs? Also, is there a reason why maybe you need more? Maybe, for example, just let's just say use, well, use vitamin C, even though it wasn't in the brief. Let's say you wrote about vitamin C. Then you go, well, if I've got a cold, the research has shown if I increase my vitamin C, even above that um, NRVs, even up to that therapeutic dose, you remember that from the last assignment, then maybe it's okay. Maybe I'm going to take that, that higher dose for a short period of time and it's going to help get help with my immunity, etc. You Maybe if you wrote about zinc, that might be a, a good one to talk about as well. A little bit of your conclusion, the key points, your overarching opinion, uh, and then your reference list you do not need to read through. That's just additional. You're not going to read through that, but it needs to be included. All right, so have a good look at that assessment brief. It's got some information in there. You need to create a, a video presentation and it's going to be filmed as an MP4 file. So it's going to be filmed as an MP4 file. All right, so it's, it's saved as an MP4 file, which it does it automatically if, you, um, if you're filming it in, in Zoom, okay? Um, as we said, we can do it in PowerPoint, the, the slide decks, PowerPoint, Prezi, Canva, Word. Um, it's whatever you choose. So don't worry about what format. It just needs to, to basically have you speaking to the camera. It's about you presenting. Now, a couple of uh, key points, so some tips and everything. So make sure you read this. Very important, if you're using PowerPoint and you want to film in this program, you can. I did put Zoom into the brief, but you can film in PowerPoint. However, a couple of things. To make sure the camera works, you must install PowerPoint and download it onto your computer. If you try and record from the web, web version, the camera doesn't work, only the audio works. It's going to say that again. If you want to use PowerPoint and film in PowerPoint, you must install and download and save PowerPoint. Now, you all have access to PowerPoint, but you've got to download it and install it. Now, if you're going to film in Zoom, so this is in Zoom, you can just record from the uh, a web version. So it's a web-based program. It's free. And it's really easy to run. And there is a, a clip that I've created there about how to actually film in Zoom. Um, just a couple of tips is check your introduction. Um, once all slides have been finalised, uh, this will ensure that your introduction matches what you've actually done. A bit of a summary and conclusion in there as well. Uh, remember, you've only got six minutes. So do a little bit of a practice run 
time yourself before you film it because you might find it blows out to sort of 10, 15 minutes. Very important that you're succinct with your slides. Avoid busy slides. And this is a really busy slide. There's a lot going on here, a lot of information. This would not be ideal at all, okay? But I've just thrown it all in there. So hopefully you can pause it and have a bit of a read. Uh, lots of small text, it's busy, lots of pictures, maybe too many images, too many colours. Your, your slides need to be sort of clear, concise, and, uh, you know, they should help you expand or highlight what's on the slide. Include all your references, and you don't need to talk through your references. They're at the end in alphabetical order. Use a slide deck. Now, you have to submit your slide deck. So you submit that. Um, at, you usually can submit that as a file. Usually it would be something like um, a, a PowerPoint. So you submit the PowerPoint file. You should be able to upload that. So just upload your PowerPoints or your Canva file. Just upload the slide deck so we can have a bit of a look at it and we can check that as well. A couple of do's and don'ts. All right. Choose a template that works. Um, avoid things that are too sort of busy. Give a title to each slide. Make use of space. Use a consistent font. Don't try and change lots of different fonts in here. Um, provide in-text citations in both text and images. Use a camera. Uh, don't write sentences. Rule of thumb is six lines down, six words across. That's the maximum. My last slide had far too many. Don't use too many colours. Don't embed videos or use videos as a resource. This gives you a bit of an idea of what a student uh, has done previously. So this is past students' work. They presented to uh, some new mums. And as you can see, they've done this really well. They've actually done, um, you can see they've got a title. They've got some bullet points. You can have bullet points in this. They've got a, a nice picture there. They, they've put a heading on it. They've actually put a reference underneath the slide as well. So that's a, re a really nice one. They've explained um, that clearly what the presentation is about. We've got another slide here for you as well. This one, um, another student, there's an error in referencing you can see on, on the left-hand side. Um, you know, it's quite nicely set out. The colours are good. Just be careful of white fonts. It works in this instance, but sometimes it... Um, can be really difficult to see, especially if you've got a room that's quite bright. White, white backgrounds work well. Here's another example of another slide. This is talking about iodine and pregnancy, so that would have been one of the micronutrients they chose. Um, nicely laid out. It's got, it's got references there for the figures or the images, it's got reference there for the tables, et cetera, as well. Here's another example of a slide, and um, this one, uh, doesn't have the reference list or the references for those images. So it's important that you do reference those images. Here's another example of a slide. Um, down the bottom where it's in dark, it actually was, there was a reference down there. So they actually have put in there some information uh, and put a citation in there as well. Here's a, another one um, that's just another slide. They've used some free graphics there. And this is a one that looks a little bit messy. It's sort of gone out of sync to the, um, the, the graphics there in, in terms of the headings. But um, they did have a reference there for the image, but it just gives you a bit of an idea. And then finally, here's another one for iron. There was a reference down here, down the bottom for those images, but that has been taken out. So I wanted to show you a slide. So this slide, if you look at this slide, a um, couple of things that stands out for me. This slide doesn't have a reference for the image. Also, you'll see there's a lot of text there. And to me, I would never read that because it's just too much text. And imagine someone reading through that. So we've changed it a little bit to make it a little bit easier. Um, this one's slightly better because now what we've done is actually put a reference at the top of the screen with the, where the figure is. Uh, and then you've got some bullet points on the left-hand side. This is... Um, 
just looking at another one. So that one's a bit hard to see. Here we are. So this is another example. You could actually highlight it by putting some numbers there. This sort of gives you, gives you some ideas. And then also how to reference images from a book or from a website, no author, no date. Just go to your, um, your, your reference guide. There is a referencing tool there. In the library, you'll be able to find the referencing tool and that's gonna really help you. So in terms of referencing, and this is a thing that people often have trouble with in their referencing. One of the things that you need to do in your reference list is actually to have a hanging indent. So as you can see here, this is all in alphabetical order and it has a hanging indent. So it comes in after the, the, the authors, you'll see it actually comes in. So it's got a hanging indent. You'll also notice that the hyperlink has been removed. Uh, double spacing is required between the references. And what I would recommend you do for the purpose of these presentation, remember you're not gonna read through all the references, is that you shrink the font down for your reference pages so that they can fit onto usually onto the, the one page. Okay. All right, I'm just going to flip my slides a little bit. If you want to know how to create a hanging indent, it's pretty easy to do in Word. Um, you just, there's the button that you go through on the home page, then you just click on that little one there where it's got paragraph, and then it comes up like this where you just click on that and click hanging, and that's it. So, writing the script. We've already talked about it, write it out, practice it, then practice recording it. You can record it as many times as you like till you're actually happy. Uh, sometimes you might find that you're uh, never quite happy because you want to keep going. Um, as long as you get the key bits of information in there, try to avoid reading directly from the slides. Um, you know, if you can make some eye contact with the camera, fantastic. Because I just want you to imagine that you're presenting this to an interest group. Maybe it's your own um, podcast. So think about some of these, you know, the opportunities that this type of thing might provide for you. So as I said, you can record this in Zoom. You can do it in PowerPoint, but you must download the PowerPoint program um, rather than using the web. Um, you'll need to use um, a camera. So you'll all, you should all have a camera and a microphone built into your computers, but familiarize yourself with how to use these programs. Look, Zoom's really, really simple to use. Um, both, it also is PowerPoint, but just the key thing is you will need to download the program to be able to use the camera. So gentle reminder, reference all materials, both text and images. Use a minimum of five academic sources. Um, you don't need to record your dur duration on the cover slide. It's okay if you don't because, you know, you might go slightly over. We can see how long it actually is. If you go over the, the time that's been allocated, marking will stop. So if you had some of your key slides at the end, we're not going to be grading those. If you don't have a video presentation, there's no camera, you're going to be losing at least 20 marks. So you can see that that's actually part, a big part of this. Um, ensure you web, any websites are credible. So things such as government websites, so the National Health and Medical Research Council, the NRVs, that's the type of thing that we are looking for in terms of credible government websites. Um, Remember, don't use videos, resource. You can also include a video of yourself in the digital presentation. So this is what I've done. I'm actually filming myself within this film. It's, it's a little bit crazy. You can do it on, on Zoom. It's not too hard to put your own image in there. And then finally, good luck. You need to practice. Start planning it now. It takes a little bit longer than you realise. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually kind of fun. And some of you will enjoy this experience and may go on to do some public speaking in nutrition. Thank you.